So, good morning, everybody. Good morning to those of you in America. And a very warm good afternoon to those of you in Europe. It's an absolute pleasure to see so many faces. Well, I can certainly see some here, but the main thing is that so many faces on both sides of the Atlantic. And I am very pleased to welcome you today to our Empower Her event in honor of International Women's Day. Now, we are a little ahead of ourselves, as you may know, since the official commemoration of this day is next Wednesday on 8th of March. But we're gathering here today to accommodate the very busy, busy schedules of everybody and, and to ensure we had the greatest range of speakers as possible. And I'm sure you can all agree that women's achievements are all worth celebrating, not just on one day, but not all year round and on every day, in fact. So we're going to be celebrating all year. Now, this webinar is being recorded and also is going to be available to all AMCHAMs at other times. So you can also use this, use this next week and on different days again. Now, let me introduce myself. My name is Susan Danga, and I'm here today as both the CEO of the American Chamber of Commerce to the EU here in Brussels, but I'm also the chair of AMCHAMs in Europe, otherwise known as ACE. Uh, very proud to be so. Now, ACE is the umbrella organization for 46 American Chambers of Commerce from 44 countries throughout both Europe and Eurasia. We serve as the bilateral voice of American and European and Eurasian companies. And it is really great to see so many of com companies joining us today. And I have the pleasure of working with many of you both in both roles, um, also as um, CEO of Amcham EU. And there, our primary objectives are one, to build a more competitive Europe, one with an integrated single market. And the second one is to maintain and strengthen the transatlantic relationship. And the reason I point those out is because we cannot achieve either of those goals without the full participation of half of our population. International Women's Day has been celebrated now for more than a century, and it is an important reminder of all that women have achieved, both culturally, economically, and politically. And it's also a reflection of the progress that still has to be made to achieve true equality because we are not there yet. And as associations with such a diverse membership across a real range of sectors, AMCHAM EU here in Brussels and our sister AMCHAMs are uniquely positioned to encourage dialogue and to raise awareness about women's equality, especially in the workplace. And that's why this partnership between AMCHAM EU, between ACE, and also the US Department of Commerce is so powerful. With the, we've had leadership and we have leadership from the US Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo. And with her, we created this joint Empower Her initiative back in March, 2022, when it was launched to bolster women's economic empowerment, equality and entrepreneurship within our communities. And a key part of this initiative is having companies and AMCHAMs in the ACE network to sign a declaration of support to symbolize their commitments to empower women. And I'm very proud to say today that we have now reached our goal of signatures from over 100 unique companies and more than 35 companies in the ACE, sorry, 35 AMCHAMs in the ACE network, which is a, certainly an achievement worth celebrating. So congratulations to everyone who's listening in and, and involved for making it happen. But still the work is far from over. And I don't need to tell anyone in this webinar how important it is to promote women's advancement, especially in international trade. It's good for business and it's also the right thing to do. Many American companies are already hard at work creating and implementing programs that improve the business environment for women. And we're going to hear about some of those later today. But what you might not know is just how needed your efforts are. Did you know that a mere 8.8% .8 of all Fortune 500 women companies have women as their CEOs? And women represent only 5.4% of C all CEOs globally. Now, as a, sitting here as a mother of two girls, or I should say now young women, this topic is uh, very close to my heart. I also have a son. But women are 50% of the population, yet only a fraction of corporate leadership. So this is really not much of an example to them. We can do better. And I have not even started there on the women who still do not have even access to even think about achieving these positions, those who are not haven't got the education to even get there. Let's not even start on the women in Ukraine who are also trying very hard to just break out and start their own businesses. There are so many challenges we have to face. Equity is a key part of what it means to respect human dignity 
and one of the transatlantic values that really unites both the public and private sector. And knowing that so many of you, I can't see you unfortunately, but I know so many of you are here today to stand up for equity, and this is such an important start. As I said, none of this would be possible without the commitment of the US Department of Commerce, a partner that shares these transatlantic values. And that is why it is my honor to welcome today the department's Under Secretary of Commerce for International Trade, Marisa Largo. A warm welcome to you, Marisa. In her role, she leads the federal government's efforts to assist American businesses in international markets. She enforces fair trade policies, encourages travel and tourism to the United States and promotes American products and services overseas. In just a moment, she's going to tell us about the department's vision for equality and how companies can move the needle on women's participation and leadership in international trade. And after that, we'll hear insights from a panel of private sector leaders and welcome to you all ladies. Finally, we'll end with a discussion about the takeaways from today's event. I very much look forward now to hearing from all our guests. And with that, I'm gonna would step aside if you were here, Under Secretary, but I'll move aside on the screen and hand over the floor and the screen to Under Secretary Largo. Over to you. Thanks so much, Susan. And I just love the idea that every day is Women's Day. That's the future that we're all working to get to. Um, I so appreciate the opportunity to share what we're doing at the U.S. Department of Commerce and specifically at the International Trade Administration or ITA, because we are so aligned with the goals that you outlined for the Empower Her initiative. Um, I also think that while you gave the statistic, it is worth repeating it. We had set ourselves a goal of having 100 companies signed on to the declaration of support by May of this year. Here we are on the 2nd of March and we've reached that goal. So we need to celebrate this result, but at the same time, we know that we, we have to continue striving to do more, to ensure that we're harnessing the power of equity to drive prosperity in all of our communities. So at ITA, we are committed to leveling the playing field and boosting the competitiveness of US companies and their workers in global markets. But we know that our efforts are gonna fall short if we don't extend this opportunity to all businesses. We know that companies engaging in international trade earn more, they pay higher wages, and they're less likely to go out of business than those that don't export. But Susan, given that reality, the statistics that you gave are sobering about how much le less likely women-owned businesses are to export than their male-owned peers. So let me give you a couple of concrete examples of things that we're doing um, here at the Department of Commerce. This past fall, I led the department's first ever woman-focused trade mission. We went to the Netherlands, to Portugal and France, traveling alongside more than a dozen incredible female tech executives, this trade mission focused on expanding opportunities for women in technology, not only creating business connections, but also, also fostering networks of support and advocating for more women in labs, in boardrooms, in C-suites. We were greeted in each of the three countries by the ambassadors, all three of whom were women. But as exciting as this trade mission was, it was more than just a chance to showcase innovative women-led tech companies. It also offered a valuable opening to advocate for expanded opportunities for women in tech and to share approaches to creating spaces for women to thrive on both sides of the Atlantic. Now, <clears throat> A few weeks after this trade mission, I returned to Europe, traveling to Germany, where I was able to participate in AmCham Germany's Transatlantic Business Conference. And during the conference, it was such a pleasure of participating in an incredibly candid and inspiring Empower Her Lunch, which was so expertly moderated by AmCham Germany's president, Simone Menet. I find it invaluable to hear directly from women entrepreneurs and women business leaders so that I can better understand, but importantly, then act 
on their unique needs and challenges. So for that reason, I make it a point to hold an equity related event whenever I travel and I travel near constantly in this role. These events very frequently focus on expanding economic opportunity for women and supporting women entrepreneurs. At each of these engagements, I come away impressed and energized by their eagerness to participate, to be part of creating a more equitable future. ITA's efforts to empower women, however, extend beyond the events. We're working to empower women through developing and implementing programs that support women and women-owned businesses. To this end, in August, we launched our first ever Women's Economic Empowerment and Entrepreneurship Strategy to leverage existing activities, but also to provide a strategic framework for future efforts from incorporating gender considerations into all of our programs, ensuring intersectional approaches, and encouraging allyship across the Department of Commerce. This strategy is also going to be driving forward specific priorities, including increasing the number of U.S. women-owned businesses that are assisted by ITA, promoting efforts to help U.S. women entrepreneurs internationalize at an early stage, advancing gender equity in the workplace, and addressing foreign trade and economic barriers that inhibit economic growth for women across the globe. Having been in, a, having been a woman in male-dominated fields, I know that it can be isolating, but it can also be empowering. Countless times I've been the only woman in the room. Like I'm sure everyone on this call, I have been passed over, underestimated, and just downright ignored. But I've also learned to use how I was misperceived as an advantage to exceed expectations and to earn and to demand the respect of my peers and superiors. I also know the tremendous upside that the right support and mentorship can offer, including in international trade. Throughout my time in government, I've seen the power of trade and investment to improve lives, the benefits of increasing women's access to capital, and the capacity of economic development programs to transform conditions for individuals, for families, and for communities. I'm proud of the actions that our ITA team is taking to empower and expand opportunity for women in trade and commerce across the globe. And that's why I'm so pleased that I can be part of this Empower Her initiative in Europe and Eurasia. Susan, I personally want to thank you. Without your leadership and that of uh, Secretary Raimondo, Empower Her would not be where it is today. Um, I think it's worth, again, reflecting on the fact that in a year, we have 100 companies that have signed on to this vision and are already implementing Empower Her's two goals. So it's a privilege to be here wearing my International Women's Day purple, uh, because as you said, every day is Woman Day, is Women's Day. And just to see the number of people who are on this call, um, because we are passionate about this mission, I want to emphasize that working on Empower Her is not an add-on to our day jobs. It is an absolutely integral part of what we are doing to enhance international trade and commerce. And with that, I'll look forward to hearing from our other panelists, and I'll end in my native tongue, Balante. Thank you so much, Under Secretary, for your for your passion. Um, you know, we we sometimes we be, we're on these calls and there is no passion in the meetings, but you are truly do, are inspiring. Thank you so much for your your remarks. And I was noting down um, several points there, and. Uh, I actually just came from a lunch myself with an ambassador who was a woman. So yes, it's, it's good to see how many women ambassadors there are out there. So with that, um, we move on. I know you're going to stay with us under secretary to listen to the panelists and maybe ask a few questions later, which is our plan. I would like to uh, move on now. And it's my pleasure and honor to introduce our panel of experts from the private sector. We have with us today, and you'll see on the screen here, Marcia Baliciano, who is Chief Sustainability Officer at Relics. Welcome to you, Marcia. 
We have mm -hmm. Alessandra Santacocci, who is Director of Government and Regulatory Affairs for IBM. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning, Alessandra. And we also have Wala Alami, who is Vice President for Global Influenza. Lead. She's the lead at Pfizer. So a real range of sectors here and also nationalities. And I know you're sitting all over the place, New York, Brussels, Italy. So welcome to you all. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with Marcia. Maybe I can ask you first, Marcia. And, you know, talk, you know, just a few, a few minutes, about five minutes. And tell us a little bit about, you know, well, you know, who is your company? And why is gender diversity so important? And um, why is it important to your company, to your business? And I think importantly for our audience today, you know, give us some, can you give us some examples of what you're doing? And we're going to, I'm going to ask all the panelists to do that. And then at the end, we'll have some questions. So firstly, over to you, Marcia. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And thank you to the Undersecretary and to my fellow panelists. It's an honor to take part in this discussion today. I'm very passionate, um, as I know we all are, on the importance of promoting uh, gender equality, but also equity as it relates to gender. And that means, um, and that's the theme of International Women's Day 2023, not just making sure that it's an equal playing field, but looking at different communities and how we need to raise uh, them up, uh, whether that's uh, disabled women or um, uh, black women, uh, whatever it might be. You asked about our company, so we are Relix. Uh, we are a company of 37,500 people operating around the globe uh, with a strong presence in Europe, but also the United States um, amongst 40 other countries. And we are focused very much on our unique contributions to society. So that includes ensuring that we fight fraud uh, because we're all about data and analytics that can make a difference and that includes ensuring that we use those products to help uh, along the lines of financial inclusion to uh, help people who might not be credit visible to get access to credit uh, through our risk business, but it's also about our science uh, business Elsevier and focusing on improving health outcomes. And one of the ways as it relates to gender that we're doing that is through um, looking at the impact of women in science, um, which they have typically not had um, uh, equal representation in terms of their scientific output. So how can we support them in doing that through research? Uh, but it's also looking at how uh, science has not, uh, and particularly as it relates to health, uh, drug um, discovery has not factored in uh, how that affects women. And so our colleagues have recently developed a full anatomical model uh, uh, for women um, that can help researchers in, in that quest. We also have uh, LexisNexis Legal and Professional, which is focused on promoting the rule of law and access to justice. And we do that in an, a number of ways as it relates to promoting uh, women in the legal community. We support the International Bar Association's uh, work on senior women in the law as they do the first longitudinal study looking at senior women and how um, that can uh, be um, something that we can look at how they're developing through their careers and, and supporting them uh, in doing so. And then we also have RX, uh, which is our events business. It's one of the world's largest face-to-face -face events companies. It's everything from Comic-Con uh, to World Future Energy Summit. Um, and so uh, how can we use those communities to support uh, women? And that is something that my colleagues are actively looking at. Uh, but a common denominator for us is around uh, women in technology. And we know that we need women to, to uh, be at the table and to support them. And so we have a women in tech program uh, where we uh, match women to senior leaders in technology. And, and very excitingly, uh, that includes women uh, who are tech leaders in our business to help them um, as they uh, progress in their careers. That's really essential that they uh, have role models to look at and that we not only do 
uh, mentoring, but we also do advocacy and advocacy to help them um, to call, call them out and recognize their contributions and help them to uh, advance. And advocacy is also something that's incredibly important to us uh, outside of our, of our company, using our resources and skills, those unique contributions. And the sustainable development goals are central to us at Relics. Uh, we set uh, goals um, that we put in the public domain. Uh, so just last week, actually, you can see our uh, annual report, which includes our public commitments on corporate responsibility and that includes our um, inclusion goals, but it also shows that those goals are linked to the SDGs and uh, the SDGs include gender equality, and we cannot achieve gender equality um, if we don't uh, and, and make a, a significant impact um, on the SDGs if we don't factor in uh, performance on SDG 5. So without that, we won't achieve all the rest, good health and well-being, uh, no poverty, uh, SDG 1, zero hunger, um, climate action, uh, SDG 13, etc. So one of the things that we did in 2017 is we released a free resource for the world called the Relics SDG Resource Center. And just uh, this morning, I looked to see if you uh, uh, type in uh, gender equality, how many resources you come up with, and there's over 400, and this is freely available for the world. Uh, there's also a news tracker on the homepage, so you can get up to the minute news uh, on gender equality. And um, just uh, when I looked a moment ago in preparation for our discussion today, I found, for example, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and a story, a news story that just came out at 1.45 this afternoon GMT on young African girls innovating to tackle climate change. So we are about sharing our resources, uh, sharing knowledge, and that is something that's really uh, critical to us. And I look forward to talking more about that as we advance in the panel today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Marcy. I think it's a really interesting take on, you know, actually what the company is doing in terms of its products, in terms of advancing, um, you know, using that data to advance gender equality. I'm sure we're going to hear examples about what the companies, actually, other companies are doing with regard to their own employees. So I think it's a really interesting angle. And certainly thanks for the resource, which I'm sure will be noted by the listeners and everyone who's working. Um, we look forward to, I look forward to looking at that too. So thanks, Marcia. Let's move on. Let me move on to Alessandra. Uh, I don't know. Are you in Italy, Alessandra? Hi. Hi. All right. Yes. Welcome Hi. to you. Uh, and again, Alessandra is with IBM, and uh, we're, we're, you know, looking forward to now hearing what you are doing there at the company. You know, what, why, you know, why should we even promote gender diversity in women's leadership, and what do you actually do at IBM to do so? So, thanks for giving us uh, your take on this. Thanks a lot. Sir. Good morning. Good, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for inviting IBM to. Uh, at this very important initiative uh, uh, celebrating the International Women's Day. Uh, let me spend uh, a, a minute introducing myself and IBM. Uh, I'm Alessandra Santa Croce. I'm the Government Regulatory Affairs Director uh, at uh, IBM Italy. I joined IBM in 2008. And uh, let me uh, tell you that I'm, I'm proud to be part of a company that first in the world and continuously since uh, 30 years, early 30, 1930, uh, has put gender uh, parity uh, and respect for diversity uh, in, in each dimension at the core of uh, its values. Um, change and innovation have always been at the core of uh, uh, IBM strategy. Today, IBM is uh, present in, small, in uh, more than uh, 170 countries and uh, uh, across the globe. And uh, today, uh, we can describe IBM as a leading provider of uh, uh, global hybrid cloud and artificial intelligent, intelligence and consulting expertise, uh, supporting its client uh, in their journey of transformation in close cooperation with the ecosystem. I, I, want, uh, I also want to catch the occasion to uh, recall the 
strong collaboration with the AMCHAM DNI working group, uh, which is very important for uh, IBM here in Italy and uh, all over the, the, the world, as well as the strong collaboration we have with the US Embassy and U US Consulate here in Milan. In Milan, uh, including uh, the, the the support we we had the opportunity to to give to the minority business focused uh, trade mission in Italy, which is uh, another dimension of diversity, but very important for uh, for all. So going back to to the topic of, of the discussion, I would uh, I would uh, say that uh, we have a lot of numbers, but key figures confirm, uh, and Susan was mentioning some of them the need of a, a, an even greater effort to, uh, to get a real woman empowerment today. And while optimism about progress has grown over time, gender parity in leadership is actually uh, far away, farther away. Some numbers, uh, Susan has also uh, has already mentioned some uh, figures, but I want to I recall some of them. 18% is the average per percentage of women serving as top leader in their organization. 79% are the organizations not prioritizing the, advanced, uh, the advancement of more women into leadership roles. And 90.5 is the number of years it will take to reach global gender parity. This number is uh, differently interpreted, but it's a very important number, I believe. Uh, moreover, uh, exactly yesterday, IBM, in particular IBV, which is a center of study uh, of IBM, published a very interesting report about uh, uh, women's empowerment. I will provide you the link later. Uh, but uh, it's uh, really interesting uh, the one of the main highlight uh, the, the the report includes uh, the fact that uh, um, while optimism about progress is growing because there is a, an increased awareness gender parity in uh, leadership is actually further away the study uh, it's interesting because it's also proposing a roadmap for uh, public and private uh, sector to uh, speed up the process toward the, the gender, uh, the women empowerment. And the same report uh, is uh, um, underlining a very important concept, according to my view, that gender equity is not a women's issue. Uh, when women succeed, everyone wins. That's, that's the idea. And in fact, uh, I believe, we believe that uh, Women empowerment is not just a matter of fairness or equity. It is a key challenge for pursuing a sustainable growth uh, more in general. And several statistics based on the very important study recently uh, published are showing the strong correlation between the women's and diversity leadership and the business performance. Just to recall some of them, um, there is the connection, uh, the correlation between uh, financial performance, which is plus 27% when there are leadership, female leadership. Um, according to BCG, there is a, 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 a higher percentage of innovation. And Forbes uh, uh, found that inclusive leadership teams make better business decisions up to 87%. So these are very important data. And uh, going back to IBM, uh, let me say that uh, in terms of uh, uh, diversity and uh, uh, women empowerment, uh, uh, we have uh, an historical commitment starting in 1930. And uh, women at IBM have always contributed to the advancement of the information technologies as well as to the success of the, of the company. And uh, because we believe that diversity means innovation and more affordable uh, solution for the world. And innovation represents the answer to the biggest challenge to the world. Uh, and uh, since this uh, uh, 1930, today we are continuing this uh, direction. Uh, we believe that uh, the, the education, especially STEM disciplines, uh, culture, and networking are the three ingredients uh, to bridge the gap for women empowerment. And this is uh, exactly the perspective that, that um, lead our activities, both internally and externally. 
So just to share with you some example, concrete examples, uh, due to the time, I cannot go into details, but uh, internally, uh, we are uh, working in, uh, in several uh, uh, initiatives to support talent, to uh, draw a development process. We have a very important project called Elevate Program, which support the talent to grow and to achieve leadership position, creating a pipeline, because this is another important aspect that we have to consider for women empowerment. Uh, we have uh, here in Italy, Women in Tech, which is an, Ital an, an initiative uh, aiming to um, promote STEM and technology among the, uh, the women. And uh, at IBM, we have established the Women's Executive Council, which is a global uh, initiative, which is uh, de deployed in each uh, country, aiming to create opportunity for uh, women inside the uh, company, um, promoting mentorship, uh, promoting networking internally and externally, and supporting the uh, peculiarities of women in, uh, in the organization. Uh, looking outside, if we want to mention some initiative, external initiative, uh, we have the, the, the participation with YAMCHAM, the DNI group, but also we are working with uh, uh, Valore D, which is a company's association focused on uh, women's empowerment and more in general diversity. We are working on STEM Yamochi, uh, the STEM initiative to promote uh, STEM, especially in, uh, in the secondary school, the first primary and secondary school. We have developed a project called NERD, which is an acronym saying uh, is not stuff for women, trying to, let me say, um, change the prejudice, the bias that uh, sometimes is uh, um, creating problem for, uh, for, uh, for the girls in the technology sectors. And uh, we are also active member of the 30% club, which is a CEO club to, to promote the gender diversity in, uh, in the country. If, if the, the, this kind of networking is uh, um, a very common approach we have uh, all around Europe also. Uh, in Sweden, we are, we are working with uh, the We Can Do It initiative. In Ireland, uh, we are working on connecting women in IT. And I could mention uh, uh, several initiatives, but just to summarize, we are uh, um, focusing on internal uh, development and external networking. I believe that these are the two uh, aspect that uh, we should work on in for the future challenges. Okay, yeah, good. that's you, you can see you've got a massive list of examples, Alessandra. Maybe we can come back to some of those later in that once at least some time for the questions. But thank you so much for uh, that, especially I think your the points you made in particular here about the link between women's leadership and business performance and financial performance is something that we could probably stress even more. As you said, it's not just about equality, it's about business succeeding better if there's a good mix. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. It'd be interesting to get the other panelists' views on that. Let's move on to, thank you so much, Alessandra. Let's move on to Wala. Wala, uh, again, a warm welcome to you. Um, and so now Wala again is from the Pfizer. So we have a different perspective. It's interesting to get a different sectoral perspective. So maybe you can do the same. You know, why is female empowerment so important in life sciences and you know how is Pfizer responding to these challenges so over to you thank you yeah thank you thank you very much um Susan and and I'm Chan uh, Europe for um having me and having me represent Pfizer I wanted to reflect Susan on some of the numbers um that you shared earlier and really as you mentioned bring the life science um and healthcare industry perspective um women are closing the gap in uh, the life science. So as, as, as you certainly know, women represent more than half um, of students in the life science um, universities. And we see this uh, number progress with women as they enter healthcare industries. And we see them represent more than 50% at an entry level. As we progress in the organization, 
um, we see in the healthcare industry women uh, representing 53% at the senior manager and director level, which is 18% higher than other sectors. So I really wanted to take a moment, pause, and celebrate the progress that the healthcare industry has made um, in terms of attracting and progressing women um, inside you know, the, the various uh, companies. Yet, we have to do more, and we have to do more faster. Uh, we have to do more uh, because we, we heard it from our panelists before, there is more progress that we need to see happen at the C-suite level. Um, European Women on Board Board published reports that shows that we still have women and represented across industries um, at uh, in European board. They only represent 35%, so we need to do more. And women still are underrepresented at the C-suite level. They only represent 19%, so we need to do more and ensure that women have a seat at the table to be the voice of the 50% of the population, Susan, you mentioned in your introduction. So that's why, first, we need to do more. Second, we need to do more faster. And I wanted to really reflect on while the um, women empowerment discussion has been ongoing, and, and you mentioned the day we're celebrating is 100 years old, yet we have an event that happened a few years ago, which is COVID, that actually changed uh, the equation and the data speak you know, for um, themselves. So we know women at the, were at the forefront um, uh, in the fight against COVID, be it uh, in hospitals or be it as, you know, leaders in the industry driving, um, you know, solutions for COVID crisis. Um, we have also seen women carrying more of the weight in terms of res responsibilities during COVID. And what we want to do is move faster to avoid that what has happened during COVID for women advancement in leadership does not get exacerbated and we continue to celebrate the progress we've seen in the past um, few years. So I, I really wanted to reflect on the, uh, on the numbers, give a higher level overview of where the industry sits before, you know, moving to Pfizer. And I'm, I'm super proud today to be uh, representing Pfizer. So as you know, Pfizer is a US-based, innovative um, pharma company that is proud to have a strong footprint um, in Europe versus via our manufacturing side, but also our broad um, supply uh, and network. And more importantly, um, the, the culture that is driving all the innovation that um, Pfizer is bringing you know, to, to, to the world. So this is driven by a culture that believes in the power of diversity, equity, and inclusion as a, a driver to bring innovation and accelerate this and catalyze this breakthrough thinking that is helping us to bring the breakthroughs that we believe um, change um, you know, patients and, and, and people life. And um, Pfizer commitment to uh, gender equities is, is not new, so we have um, we are aligned in terms of women empowerment on the AmCham goals, Susan, that you mentioned earlier, but we have also established parity goals um, back in 2019, where the aim is for Pfizer to have women representation uh, at the VP level and above exceeding 47% by 2025. And as we track our progress, we are proud to see that we're well on track as of December um, 2022, uh, we had women at the VP level and above exceeding 43%, which gives us the assurance that where we are, what we are doing to drive women empowerment um, is, is, is working and, 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 and well um, on track. And so you you asked you know um, about initiatives, and I'm sure we would have the opportunity to um, get more in depth uh, on, on on the initiative. But I think for, for, first of all is um, Pfizer also is is giving the opportunity to women and men allies to contribute to all the efforts that the company is doing. So we have at Pfizer uh, Pfizer Women Resource Group, uh, which is a a, a group where we have women from across the globe. Uh, this, this group exists in Europe as well as uh, called as Power Europe, where we have women um, and men contributing to developing initiatives as well um, to, to drive women empowerment across um, the organization. So I wanted to give 
you know, few examples. One that is close to my heart and I wanted to reflect on, you know, the, the fact that we are a rapid environment that that changes all, all, all the time and how we need to be uh, agile to adapt our women empowerment. The, the first one is a, a partnership that Pfizer has uh, established with um, TENT. Um, TENT is um, uh, an organization that works across the, the globe to help refugees um, uh, to integrate in their community and find work opportunities they deserve. And so Pfizer uh, embarked on that, that, that this partnership with the goal globally to have 500 refugees um, hired uh, at Pfizer and supported with mentorship uh, at the global level. We have the same initiative happening in Europe, and um, we are proud to see the progress uh, of the pilot established in France, Germany, Italy, where we have uh, more than 110 uh, women being mentored to help them, you know, deal with the, the crisis that uh, the political instability is created and still leverage um, their strengths and, and support them to fully unleash um, their, their potential and continue to contribute to the society. So this is one example of external partnership, but we also have several programs that are supporting women um, advance in, in, in their career. In Europe, uh, we have launched more than 12 years ago a program called F FATE for female aspiring leaders um, talent in, in, in Europe uh, that supports women through mentoring, coaching, and tailored uh, leadership um, um, sessions to help them advance throughout the career. And the most important thing that we see in this program is the value it brings because it, it helped women progress three times faster um, you know, in their career um, uh, uh, journey. We have similar programs um, across the region because we believe in the power of developing women, but capturing the unique culture element that exists in different regions. So we have programs in Africa and Middle East called LAFTA that really embrace the cultural difference and still uh, design leadership uh, programs that help women um, develop uh, and grow in line with us, their aspiration and add value to the breakthrough making that Pfizer is, is, is embarking on. Um, and, and we have women inspiring women. I mean, I can go on and on yeah. and on um, with with examples, but I will leave this for yeah, the no, conversation. Thank yes, thank you. Thanks. So uh, thank you very much. Voila. So um, actually, let's um, let's try and have a bit of a conversation now about this. Thank you so much for again for the for the figures there, which are always pretty remarkable, um, both encouraging, I have to say. So congratulations again to Pfizer for for making those advancements. So we should celebrate that. But at the same time, I, I, what your points about we still need to do more and the fact that we need to do it faster that goes refers back to I think uh, Marcia's comment about 93 years someone quoted the 93 years before we achieved gender parity or maybe it was under Secretary Largo in fact I'm, I'm not sure who said that but it's not important who said it perhaps I can throw out a, a first question and then we'll go to under, under Secretary I know you have some questions probably too I think I can follow up on the the sort of cooperation across Europe you know you're all multinational companies how closely are you working? How joined up are you in these initiatives? I, at the end of this session, before we leave, I'm going to give you some examples of some of the, the, the projects that are going on with all the AmCHAMs around Europe on Empower Her. But I'm just interested to know how closely you work together as teams across countries and maybe, you know, which are the regions or which are the countries where more work does need to be done in our, in, I'm talking about our region over here, Europe and Eurasia. Uh, perhaps I go back to Marcia, to you, to, to sort of, give us a sense of that cooperation within the company across regions and which region stands out as perhaps needing a little bit more help? Absolutely. Well, um, we know that um, employee resource groups are really a fantastic way. And I'm thinking about the colleagues who are on the call today, um, that that can be a really useful way of networking. And while I mentioned um, similar networks at Pfizer and I know um, at IBM with Alessandra as well, um, that's how we can uh, hear from one another across regions. That's really important. And I think also um, we need to 
get inspiration and support. So the work that AmCham EU is doing is really critical to that. There are others, um, the uh, Women's Empowerment Principles, which is a, a coordinated effort between UN Women and the UN Global Compact is also really great. There's um, uh, a tool where you can do some benchmarking to see you know, where your activities today and where's your, your policies. And then I'd also encourage um, uh, those who are listening and they're, I'm sure they're doing it already to measure, measure, measure. We um, have inputted uh, real-time data so um, that uh, managers in the business can look and see how we're doing from one day to the next. Um, and that's really important so that we can see um, the yes. trend. Um, we are at, at Relax, we're about 50% uh, men and women. Uh, and when you look at anyone who manages someone that's 44% women, gets a little bit thinner at the top at our most senior women. Uh, but we're very proud uh, to have a CEO of one of our, our businesses uh, at Elsevier, Kumsal Bayezid, named and comparably is one of the best CEOs uh, for 2022. And I see what she brings to that role. Um, and that's uh, humility as well as really sharp intelligence. And we need to see these um, figures who can inspire us to uh, take on mm -hmm. the commercial roles that we need to and to excel in our areas of expertise. But I, I can't uh, agree more that collaborating is really important and events like this today um, helped us to do that. Thank you, Marcia. Maybe just, just one more from me. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm under secretary, you have your hand up. Oh, oh, you're on mute. No, I'm sorry, that was a mistake. And uh, no problem. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let me let me just ask one follow up question, and then uh, we'll turn to the under secretary for her questions. I, I like I love it. The measure, 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 because I think probably one of the main takeaways that any of us will will remember today are some of these figures that come out. I think that's what really makes a difference. And it, you know, thanks to companies and others like yours who are doing this measurement, that would bring me to the communication aspect of it. And maybe maybe I'll go back to you, Walla. Do, do you think we're doing, are we doing enough to communicate it? Do you think, or is there a part of the, the population that just gets tired with these figures coming out and here they go again? Are we doing enough to communicate these figures or should we be doing more? And if so, you know, what are you doing? What's the company doing? And, you know, how much more can we do to get the measure out that actually it is still going to take 90 years? Um, and actually these these figures are so it's still a massive gap. Thank you. Yeah, that's that, that's a great question, Susan. I, I think, f first of all, I agree, we can only progress at things that we measure. Um, so if we don't measure, if we don't measure, we cannot make, you know, make progress. Um, can, are we doing uh, enough in, in, in communicating? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, when we look in, into where, where we are, cross sectors, across industries, we need to communicate more until we achieve our goal. And once we achieve our goal, we will need to communicate more to sustain um, our goals. Because as I have mentioned earlier, things are static, are not static. You know, we only needed an event like COVID to take us back many years. So you mentioned the 19 free years, that was before COVID. If you factor in, you know, the impact of COVID, we will have to do, to, to do more. Second thing is culture, generations. We are not, um, you know, ev everything changes uh, continuously. So I don't think a recipe that we used 10 years ago to move the needle on women in, in empowerment will continue to be the same because of how the environment changes. So we have to stay nimble, agile, get new insights from the discussion, as Marsha mentioned, with uh, women and, and, and male to be able to continue increase awareness and adapt our strategy to make progress. So my answer to your question is we communicate a lot, but we need to move more to do more and be agile and nimble in adjusting how we communicate to the X generation, Z generation is not how we used to communicate to baby boomers. Um, so we will always need to think about how relevant is our message um, today across generation, across cultures? What is it that we can do differently? What is it that we can do more to continue make progress? Okay, thank you, Walla. Um, Alessandra, we'll come back to you later. I'm gonna just ask, invite the Under, Under Secretary Lager, would you like to uh, put out a question to any of the panelists? 
I thank you. I welcome the opportunity and just an observation. I've been struck by how much we are focused on statistics, um, on numbers, on measuring. And I think that one of the challenges is the aggregation, because I do think that the whole is greater than the sum of the of the parts. Um, I was heartened by a reference, by Marcia, uh, Marcia's reference to SDG 5. Um, I think many of us know a number of the SDGs, but everyone knows SDG 5 as one way of, of grounding ourselves. Um, I, also, given the diversity of AmCham EU's memberships, um, the I wonder how we tailor the women's event that I held in Uzbekistan was very different from the one in Amsterdam, um, where we went into a discussion of neurodiversity. In many countries, however, there's only one element of diversity. And so I wonder how you think in addition um, to evolving from my discussions of diversity in the early 80s, which were so different from today, how you think about opportunities for expanding the discussion of diversity to embrace other elements of it, which I think is helpful to the cause of gender diversity. And if I could toss that over to you, Alessandra. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Undersecretary. Uh, I think that is true. I think that uh, we are in a changing environment uh, and uh, it's uh, the, the women empowerment should be uh, managed looking ahead. Uh, I believe that, uh, for example, a, as a company, as IBM, we are uh, obviously uh, working uh, um, inspired by global values, but we are working with the local culture. We have to think about uh, different contexts. So we we should, we will respect our value, but we should be ready to understand the different uh, uh, contests in which we operate and different cultures. This is a very important because uh, what is, uh, uh, let me say, a, a progression in terms of empowerment in a country, in UK, for example, is not the same in an Asian country, For uh, just, to, just to give an idea. And I believe also that there are uh, relevant differences across uh, industries. Uh, I, I believe that these are uh, very important things. We we listen about Pfizer pharmaceutical, but I, I was thinking about manufacturing, which is very different in terms of uh, uh, women's uh, uh, presence. So I believe that we should differentiate the approach, uh, keeping obviously a very clear common objective, but uh, having the ability to modulate message and actions according to sectors, regions and uh, even uh, historical moments if you think uh, they, they, they and also thinking about the future because the business model we are used to think today to uh, will be very different in the future if you think about the covid implication uh, introducing flex flexibility introducing a different way of working uh, has created different contexts that could be a great opportunity for uh, uh, diversity but uh, it could be also a great risk because we, we know that uh, during COVID, uh, women were the, the most uh, affected uh, part of the population. So I believe that the challenge of the future will be the balance between uh, strong uh, principles and uh, uh, update to the evolution, to the transformation. That's, that's important according to, to my view. Thank you. Um, Under Secretary Lager, did you have any other questions or no? No, back to you, Susan. No, let's leave it there. I'm going to just, before we, I, actually, I want to, please don't tune out yet because I'm going to announce all these upcoming Empower Her events, but maybe just to do a closing round, literally 30 seconds each, not more. Um, I'm going to ask you a, a fun question. I don't know. I don't know if any of you have daughters or not. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe someone else, a friend's got a daughter. I certainly have two daughters. Maybe... What advice would you give if you had to your daughter today? Just say, this is the advice I give you for uh, getting on. This is in the world today to uh, achieve women's equity. What, what sort of word of advice would you give a young, a young woman today trying to embark on a career 
and make her way in the world. Who shall I start? Who would like to give her the first go? Um, I can voila, go. Voila, I'm going to go with yeah. you. Just, just to close. I can, go. I can go, Susan, and I can go because I have a 10 years old daughter. Um, and, and we just had this conversation a few days before me traveling to 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 to, to New York about, you know, <laughs> women juggling work and, and, and life. And so what I'm trying to raise her with is a, is a, a 2.0 version of the messages that my mother gave me because I think they are more adapted. First of all, I want her to aim high. Um, you know, and 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 aim high from a young age so that she thinks about the choices she makes for her education without any mind barrier. Um, and I think that's um first uh, first element that I'm, I'm I'm trying to nurture without putting too much pressure on her. Um, second is to remove any bias from her own mind because I don't want her to be sabotating herself. Anyone who has a bias has an issue, but not her. So I want her to disconnect between the bias that it, that is external um, and her own self sabotage, because we know female can sometimes um, self sabotage themselves. And the third element is to go, um, you know, with with the possibility to to fail, uh, but embrace failure as a way to be better. And I think um, it's the under secretary that really mentioned um mentioned this um in 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 her in her comments so I, I want her to be to be prepared because the word is not only through roses but it's a nice journey that just makes us stronger yeah. so these are the three no, I um, think you, values thank you very yeah. much you've probably done the job of everybody here i'm going to be really strict here now and i'm going to go to under secretary as well literally uh sort of a, a because thank you Wala. those are inspiring Literally a sort of 10, 15 second, even a one word, Marcia, any a few words of advice to someone's daughter, yours or other? Well, I'm actually the mother of two young sons and we need boys and men to be champions of women. And I try yeah. and instill that. I was raised by a single mother who is um, has been um, a, a beacon for me. And yeah. I think it's, um, you know, I, while you said it so beautifully, you know, aim, aim high. If you set the bar here at the very highest, you're going to get very close or surpass it. So that's a um, good one. That's a good one. Hold on and to that dream. Boys to be champions of women. Alessandro, you're something even shorter. So <laughs> I'm trying really hard. Um, I, I will try, uh, first of all, be curious because I think that curious curious. is, okay. is uh, really important. Going behind, behind, beyond uh, the limitation, the perceived limitation, mm -hmm. and don't follow the easiest way, uh, what seem, uh, seems seems ah. easiest way, just because somebody else believes that is the right one. I, I think that we have to think uh, differently and uh, challenging the, the prejudice or the uh, status quo. Very good, very good. And and I don't know, under Secretary Lago, if you've got a a yeah. final word well i'm so heartened by the comments of the other three which is such wisdom yeah. being passed along i'd add two things embrace your differences they're what make you unique and look out for other women that's great yeah amazing love it. love it so with that i'm writing these down i'm going to tell my daughters tonight so there we go. So with that, um, I just before we just firstly, thank you very much to all of you. That's fascinating. I think the conversation is the best bit and we could have carried on there. Thank you all for your time and also your all your efforts for advancing women's leadership. Um, I thank you, Under Secretary, for, for endorsing this and joining us today. And again, this is just one day. We need to be doing this every day and getting those messages out. I really hope it leaves everyone online. All my colleagues around Europe and Eurasia, i just sorry I can't see your faces, but I know you're there and members from all those chambers, from those 46 chambers that we have. Hope it gives you a clear idea of how each of us can promote equity in our own workplaces, in our cultures. You know, we talked about the context. They're so different. Do let us know if you have any upcoming programs that we can amplify and that we can learn from. If your AM chair or wherever you are out there has not yet signed the Empower Her Declaration of Support, please do reach out to us. Uh, reach out to my colleague here I'd like to thank. She's in the room near me here, Lucia from Spain. Thank you, Lucia. I'm waving at her. She's done a fantastic job together with Nina from Slovenia. Thanks to both of you for everything you did and Pamela for organizing today's event. So do reach out to Lucia. Um, 
in the last year, I want to say we've had events just to give you a range here. We've had events already from Azerbaijan. We've had Germany, as was mentioned, to Ireland. We've had Turkey, Serbia, and I'm just naming a few. I can't even name them all. Um, today's webinar is just one of the ones that we're doing. I think importantly coming up, uh, do reach out to learn more about what upcoming programs with our sister AmCHAMs. We have Romania coming up, Spain and Ukraine very shortly, but also, and I'll listen, Croatia, Bulgaria, Belgium, France, Estonia and another one in Germany and I know that Spain's doing several so this is just the beginning if you want more information do come to us we're really glad to have each and every one of you uh, with us as we move forward and with that um I'm just looking embrace uh, well yeah look at the aim high I think I'm going to go with the first one here aim high everybody let's do more let's do it faster and I think that last one Women need to look out for other women too. Let's not forget that. That's sometimes something we do forget. So with that, happy International Women's Day, everybody. Thank you so much, Under Secretary. Uh, thanks, everybody. See you very soon. Thank, Thank you for you. having that. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.